Om Agnanam Timrandasya Gyanam Jana Shalakya Chakshanam Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Vain Namaha Jai Guru Dev everyone. So you have learned to be patient. Wonderful. So, Prithu, you sent me a message earlier, but I don't remember the message. Jai Guru Dev Guruji. Okay. Yesterday in Satsang you were talking about the Bhakti path is always very joyful. We see all the force that the Guru does. Guru incarnates here. He comes from Vaikuntha to here to give us comments about the Shastras, teach us how to worship, teach us how to sing, build ashrams. That <laughs> our job is to the mind is suffering. Finished? Sorry, can you repeat your question because your mic is a bit uh, out. Where the sound is? Yeah. Jai Guru Dev, Hari Hari. The battery gone. Hari 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 Hari. Another Hari Hari Hari, you know, Hari, Akash Hari, will be Hari. here and I will Hari Hari Narayana Adi Narayana. <laughs> Just to remind the names of God. <laughs> Guruji, yesterday in Satsang you were talking about the Bhakti path is always very joyful. We see all the efforts that Guru does. Guru incarnates here, he descends from Vaikuntha to here, he gives us comments about Shastra. He teaches how to worship, he teaches sadhana, singing, build ashram, where we have all the facilities to just surrender our mind and uh, make our path easy. But uh, still, we don't surrender. The material desires, attachment comes. What we are doing wrong on our sadhana? Nah, what you're doing wrong, not you I'm talking about, what people are doing wrong is the habit. Well, because you are accustomed to a certain way of thinking, you make it very difficult. You know? this, is, this is a problem why people doesn't change. In spite of listening to the satsang, in spite of reading very nice holy books, but yet changes doesn't happen. Oh, it happened for a very short time, but yet the samskaras catch up again. Now you, have, you have seen that in your life. You see that in so many people's life. At the beginning when they enter the spiritual path, they have great enthusiasm, great joy and happiness. And they have a whole list of what they want to achieve. And in the middle of that, while the train starts going, train of spirituality is to carry on, what happened? You feel lazy. I will not do my sadhana. Chapter 3, verse 8 of Bhagavad Gita, Arjun was in the same, listening to Bhagwan Krishna, what he was saying. What did he say? How can I fight? Bhagwan, what did Bhagwan say? To him, chapter, eight, chapter 3 verse 8, he said to him, you better do your action, better, than, uh, better you do your action than inaction. Because being in an inaction state, even you will not be able to sustain your body. Uh, you become rusty. You know, if you have not done something for a very long time, what happened? You find it more difficult to do. But if you have practice and do it very often, you become expert in it. You know? So this is the same. The problem is that you have attached yourself, your mind, so much to a certain ideas a certain way of thinking. You have accustomed yourself 
to this material reality and that you think that that will bring me happiness and of course you base even when you go on the spiritual path you base that ideas upon the spiritual path itself the spirituality in spite of hearing what the guru is saying yet your mind is still attached to that what you used to think about how you used to think about that transformation doesn't change what kick in afterwards is laziness that's why you start your spiritual path yet you don't in the middle you have great ex in the beginning you have great expectation yes i will have shriman narayana and i will have god realization i will have self realization you know and then in the middle of it as you are parting you finish you find excuses no. but the one here said you have to work you have to, to have action without action nothing is possible so what is action eh? when we look at in our daily life we are constantly in action we are doing things but are we doing the things for the right reason or the wrong reason how are we doing our action even if it is the right reason hmm? our action is bind by certain things action it is one own faculty of the senses mind and intellect which encounter a certain reality in, you know encounter a certain situation into the outside which build up of mind body and intellect when it meet the object the emotion and the thoughts something is created what is created eh? when your mind encounter something no one thing must be created no there is the emotion into it the intellect into it the sense object into it the object of sense is outside so what is created no a certain tendency is created a certain tendency is created towards the object what you are focusing upon if spirituality will be your main truly focus nothing can divert you but because you prioritize the object with your emotion and your thoughts combined together you get attached to it that become your habit that become your life itself so you create a certain channel inside of you where your thoughts run through so like that there's the combination of so many thoughts that you have created so many channels you have created inside your mind when your thought is running through around now so these vasanas no of course they don't leave you at the same time that is not who you are but you built a certain relationship to these old vasanas but you find it difficult to let go yes you change on the outside but you don't change on the inside the whole satsang all this is to transform the inside the outside will transform the outside is easy to transform this is all material you can change clothes you can change tilak you can put mala you can put dancing around you can do but does that change the inside no it doesn't change the inside you can wear fancy clothes but that's it it stay only on the outside but inside is still the same old you nothing have transformed nothing have changed and what satsang and being in the presence of the master does it's to transform the inside 
But then you say, no, Swamiji's habit, Guruji, I can't change his habit. No, I'm so accustomed to that. Did you come out from your mother's womb like that? Eh? Did you come out with your mother's womb having a cigarette in your hand? Said, Mama, give me a lighter. Or a bottle of uh, whiskey. Say, Mama, hey, come, let's drink it up. No, you didn't come out of your mother with these things, you know. Or do you think it just happened like that? One moment to the other, you know, the habit just take upon you like this. Oh, you sleep one night, and the next morning you wake up, ah, with a certain habit. So you sleep, you wake up the next day, you are drunker. Eh? Oh, do you think you sleep the next day, you are a mature person? No, it is not like that. It is a countless uh, effort that you have put into that, that have made all this attached to you. That's why to transform that, it takes some time also. Look, you take, for example, you start to drink alcohol. What will be your day? One day, two days, ten days, you start drinking alcohol every day. Little bit of wine, the doctor has said, but it is very good and healthy. <laughs> Excuse in the mind will think that, yes, it is the medicine that I'm drinking. But on the eleven day, you will start looking for that medicine again. You start drinking coffee, the same thing. You start taking drugs, the same thing. You start building a certain connection with that, you know. You start to build a certain relationship. A boy sees a small uh, girl every day. Every day we'll see that girl. Or some working, you know, colleague, whatever. In the mind, the mind starts to become loose. What happened? On the sixth day, if you don't see that girl, where is she? You start to become trouble. You start to become worried. So like that, that's what the mind does. You know? Mom, the mind has created a certain reality. But it doesn't want to let go. It doesn't want to change. But yet... When you enter the spiritual path, that's what the Guru wants. But you become aware of each of these vasanas inside of you. And uproot them one by one. How? It is through satsang. You know? in, Ch in Bhagavatam, Canto 10, verse 87, Verse 16, no, ten to ten, eighty-seven, sixteen. Yes, it is said that how one can get rid of all these vasanas. Said, Your devotees is always engaged in a constant remembrance of you. In every action that they do, they remember you. That how the devotee get free. By remembering Bhagwan at all time. Even if you don't take your mala to chant, but you are remembering him. You are chanting his name. You don't need to chant loud. You chant him inside of your heart. And you perceive that everything that I'm doing is a prayer for him. That is the state into which the transformation will be happening. When you start engaging the divine in everything that you do. What the master does is to, sometimes, you don't want to change. Do you want to change? Nah. Why will I change? My life is beautiful. Why will I change? I am happy. I think so. I don't need to change anything. You can hear that in very often some people put it on, what is it? What is it? YouTube? YouTube uh, no. Uh, yes, something like this. 
No, I said, no, I don't, you don't need to change anything. Just let everything happen. But then what happened? You become rusty also. If you just let everything happen, you don't take life in, in your hand and say, yes, I want to transform. Then you will learn nothing will happen. Once there was a teacher was teaching in the class. And as he was teaching, a sudden he was looking outside. He just left the classroom, rushed outside. As he rushed outside, he saw a man coming from the village, pulling a bull. And he's pulling. Imagine that in your mind right now. He's pulling a bull. So with every step that he's making, the bull is pushing, is pulling him four steps back. He pulled the bull one step. It's like a dance. So the teacher said to the student, look what you are seeing. That is exactly what I'm doing with you. And that's what exactly you're doing with me. So seeing that, you know, this man was very well built and well, he was pulling the bull, but the bull was even more well built than him, you know. So he was pulling him also back. So the teacher approached the man and said, what are you doing? Why are you pulling the bull like that? And then the man said, look, I am a newcomer. I have recently come from the town. I don't know. How does it work? I'm learning. Then the teacher smiled and said, look, in the village, we function differently. The same, you know, when a German goes somewhere, they bring their ideas to other places. When an American goes somewhere, they bring their ideas to the places, you know. But the East function differently from the West. That doesn't link together. So, I said, the town you function differently, and the village we function differently. And this is not going to work. So I will show you how. I said, let go of the rope. He let go of the rope, so the teacher went around, collect some green, beautiful grass, he came, put it in front of the bull. And he started walking, and the bull started following. You know, he will not feed the bull, he will not give the bull the, the, the grass, but put it in front only, the bull will follow. Then the teacher started running, the bull started running. Easy. So the teacher approached the man and said, look, just do what I just did right now. Take the grass, put it in front of the bull, but one thing you should not do, don't feed it. Don't give it to him. Because the moment you give it to him, this is where the mess will happen. So you see, it's exactly that what happened you know, in satsang. You know. The guru is bringing you to where you have to be. But you are like the big bull we are pushing back pulling again and again to make an advancement of one step, but yet you go back four step. So, this is a time to reflect upon you know, yourself. Life is very easy. Spe spe especially the spiritual path it's very easy, you know. It's not that we have to become lazy and not do our actions, and not do our action, but the most easiest thing, remember Bhagavan in everything that you do. How much does it take to chant Om Namo Narayana, Shavitthal Giridhari Prabrahmane Namaha? In every action, if you chant Shavitthal Giridhari Prabrahmane Namaha, you are training that mind to think of Vithala, to think of Giridhariji at all times. So that mind 
will not have any choice but to transform him. What into which he will transform, he will transform into the image of Vittala. It will not be the image of the world into your mind. It will not be the image of worry and pain inside of your mind. But it will be the image of bliss which the one Swarup is. Yeah. And that what your mind has to have. Yeah. That is why you see the sages, you know, they are contemplating upon the spring you know, for that transformation you know, to happen. Not for themselves, but for the world. You know, that's why you say it clearly. The Guru come, where the Guru have come, come from Vaikund. And that doesn't happen easily. You know, all the other gurus, very often they will teach you, yes. Come, I have this new technique. Come, I have this new way. Come, this is easy. Come, that is easy. No, these are all BS. Nothing else, you know. Because they can't lead you. They themselves are swimming into the, the, the this worldly things. How can they free you? They can't. What they need from you is a customer. For them, you are just a customer, nothing else. They will tell you beautiful things, which is pleasing to you, because you are fool enough to listen, because you are thinking, yes, it's beautiful for my ears, it's telling me nice things for me. You are just a customer for them. You can see, go, this technique, that technique, on the internet, you have a lot of it. You are selling it, and you are the customer, you are buying it. And they will tell you nice things, because they have to, when you go to a shop, you know. Does the shopkeeper tell you, no, it's wrong? Eh? Have you ever went to a shop, that person, you're buying a car, the, 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 the person which is selling the car will tell you, oh, you know, this car has lots of defect into it, it's not a good car. But I still I'm selling this good car. Would you buy it? You are not that stupid, no? You will not buy it if somebody is telling you that. But no, they will tell you, nice, this car is wonderful, look at this wheel, look at this piston, look at this uh, chassis, uh, whatever. Very strong car. Of course, they want to sell their product to you. But into that, the, they become themselves also disciple of such people. It is not the devotee, you know, it's not the customer, it's not the devotee anymore. They become the disciple of these people because they want to tell them the right thing, they want to tell them what they want to hear. Would somebody if the mind is not challenged, the mind would never change. If the mind is so accustomed to a certain way, changes will never happen. That what have to be transformed. That what have to be changed. And that is only the master can do that. What you have to do from your side, have trust and have faith in the one, but whatever, wherever he guide you, wherever he bring you to, it is his will. Nothing happen into your will. If you will something, does it happen? No, it doesn't happen. But yet you keep willing and willing and willing, thinking that your will fulfills tree yourself. Eh? You can't fulfill even one wish in your life. You can't even transform your mind. This is one thing you can't even do. And yet, your mind is so much, with so many wish inside. Wish I was like this, wish I could be rich, wish I reached there. No, you don't need to wish all this stuff, just trust Him. He will bring you where you have to be. Life has been given in the Gita, He said, but uh, as you are born here, there is the right time to be born and the right time to die. There is not a single moment that you will die. There is not a single 
Second, you will die earlier. You will die on the right time. And that you don't need to worry about. You know? People are worried so much. Oh, I'm going to die. I've not fulfilled this. I've not fulfilled that. No, trust him. He have given you the grace of spirituality. He have given you through in the, in the form of satsang. In the form of Bhagavad Gita itself. Through the form of just love. You know, what you are enjoying right now. Continuously he's reminding you of his love inside of your life. But yet, you sit and worry. What have I lost? You're thinking in the past. What will I achieve? You're thinking in the, ter in the future. You can't be in the moment. In the life of Buddha, he had one cousin which were very jealous of him. Very, I think he wanted always to harm Lord Buddha. So one day, Gautam Bhutta was sitting under a tree. So his cousin, Devadatta, saw him. He said, ah, there's nobody around, there's no disciple around. I will take my revenge. So he hide himself on a cliff where there was a huge stone just mere pushing the stone will fall. So he waited patiently for Buddha to pass. So as Gautam Hut was passing by near the cliff itself so he pushed the stone. The stone rolled down but missed the Buddha just by a few centimeters. The Buddha looked behind, non-interest about it, and carry on very peacefully his way. Without any disturbance, nothing, he carries on his way. Devatata saw that, was very shaken and scared at the same time. You know, his plan had failed. He ran away. For many days he was far away, months he was far away, and years he was far away. He never encountered Lord Buddha. One fine day, by chance, they met each another. And Buddha, in a very polite, nice way, asked him, Where were you all this time? And he said, well, are you not mad with me? Buddha looked at him as if he don't remember what, was hap what had happened. And he said to him, what have happened, it is not the same you. It is not the same me. What is now, is now. Very profound. Hearing that, Devadatta fall down at the feet of the Buddha. Tears was flowing out and that transformation had happened. You see, this is what one doesn't understand. You know. One thing that uh, even in spite of hearing the satsang and all this, they don't change. They think that, yes, the Guru have to adapt to me. No, the Guru is ever free. All the action of the master is ever free. And what freedom it does, it does it in the freedom of now, in that moment itself. You know? It's not about the past, it's not for the future. It is for that present moment itself. So that's what you have to let go of, that mindset of the old, and be in the present moment. And appreciate what the Lord is giving you. The moment you learn to appreciate what he's giving you now, you will appreciate every moment of what will be also. But if you can't appreciate 
and have gratitude of that presence itself, you will never have gratitude. That's why transformation doesn't happen. That's why changes doesn't happen. Because you are so much attached to your old ways. But even the satsang when you're hearing, you know, it don't make sense to you. Because your mind have not challenged, you know, your mind have not gone through that transformation. And that transformation can happen only when it is going through a certain process. You know? Like gold. Gold, if you find it in nature, is full of impurity, but you have to go through thousands of degrees of heat to be purified into nice, beautiful 24 karat gold. Diamond is the same thing. You see it in nature, it just looks like a rough stone. But the diamond cut us all. The beauty about that, what he took as a diamond and start polishing it. And then you have this beautiful jewel. Gems. So the Guru does the same thing inside. He perceives the diamond that you hold inside of you. And take you and try to polish you. When he starts polishing you, what do you say? Ay, 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 it's paining. You know? The mind, the ego, is getting crushed. But does the ego ha is happy about it? No, it's not happy about it. The ego has to rebel. If the ego doesn't rebel, transformation will not happen. Through that rebellious ego, whether you entertain that rebellious or not, this is up to you. Because if you entertain that rebellious, you go into the rebellious of the ego, you will go away and you will become the enemy. There is no other choice than that. But if you allow that process to happen, that transformation to happen, the polishing to happen, you allow the fire to burn, all the impurity will be burned and transformation will happen. Chapter 2, verse 49 of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna said, you know, it is said, your devotees are the one which is always into that, my devotee is the one which is always into constant remembrance of me. And due to this constant remembrance of me, purification happen. So like that, so simple and so easy, but yet so difficult. For example, you have a problem. No? You have something which is worrying you. How does that worry become? Hmm? Enormous! Even if it's just a little thing. No, you go to the doctor, doctor tells you, Oh my God, I have seen something inside of you, a ball inside of you. Hey, it's maybe cancer. Hmm? What happened to your mind at that moment? You will create the cancer. Even if it is not cancer, the doctor has said, maybe, that maybe you don't hear. What you have heard about is the cancer is there. Finish. It's like the next day you're dying. Not the next day, the same day, actually. When you come out of the doctor, you first you went inside very, oh, no, there's nothing, you know, just a bowl. Uh, when you come out, you're already, uh, 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 finish. That moment itself, you have killed yourself. Can something be done? No. Because you have condemned yourself at that moment. You have put poison inside of you. Transformation can't happen. Fear has taken over. Being on the spiritual path, the advantage that you have, you have spirituality. But give you a certain depth about what is life. Who are you? Why are you here? It is not just to pleasing of your ears, but it is for your inner transformation. Because if you just transform on the outside, nothing will happen. The inside must transform. That longing, that pining of the heart must be there for him. If you don't have that pining of the heart, do you think Bhagwan will give you a vision of him? 
Eh? He will never give you a vision of him. You will not even see the vision inside of you. How would you see the vision outside? That pining and longing of the heart is very important. And that you get to do through accustom yourself. You have accustomed yourself to the world. You have accustomed yourself to, the, to your worry, to the pain of the world. You know it. You are expert in it. First, you have done it so many times. You have become expert. No? You have built so many channels. So you know about that. Your thought is always going in that channel, left, right, and all these things. No? It's always traveling to these places. But now, when you go on the street of Bhagavan, have to be, your thought have to build that channel to him. You, know, you have to create that relationship with him. And how you will build that relationship with him is only by the pining of the heart and the longing and loving him with the instrument which he has given you, which is the mind, the body, the intellect. That's what is accustomed to you. When the mind, body, and intellect is turned towards him, towards Giridhariji, towards Vital, he has given you his name to call him. I yeah, said, oh, my devotees, you know, in Bhagavad, you have seen how when Gajendra was being attacked by the crocodile, he didn't have anybody else to call. With the sincerity of the heart, he turned to Sriman Narayana and called Prabhu, I leave everything to you. Nothing is in my control. I have tried my best to control everything, but nothing is in my control. All it is in your control. I leave it to you. I surrender to you. At that moment, Bhagwan sent the Sudarshana. Bhagwan appeared and free him. Not only him, he free also the crocodile. So like that, everybody clutches into the jaw of Maya. But one which is not is the Supreme Lord of Love, Vitala. So if your mind is focused upon him, nothing can happen to you. That's why he gave the guarantee, whoever surrendered to me, I shall look after them, I shall care for them, I shall free them from this cycle of birth and death. So they shall reside eternally with me in Vaikant. And constantly he reminds those who belong to him for that, about that. But you have to keep reminding yourself of that also. To be free from that. Jai Gurudev.